is a story as old as political history. Communities that have a lot in common are being pitted against one another. The dog whistles in Wisconsin are coming from every angle. These are messages that are drilled into people's head and they are othering people. Because not only are there wedges around race and class, people use it to divide us, around issues of rural and urban as well. And so when you're chastising Milwaukee, what you're really doing is saying those black people. It's, it's code. So my grandfather worked for the city of Detroit and he tells me like this narrative of city versus suburbs has been going back like half a century. There's a sort of scarcity model that I think is exacerbated when you throw in racial tensions. When people don't have enough, they're looking for an answer, they're looking for a reason. And the person who's vilified, the person who they hate, is the person who other people tell them to hate. When corporate media tells you know, people that, oh, it's immigrants' fault that you don't have a job. No, it's a multi-billion dollar corporation fault you don't have a job. In the Midwest, there's this like Minnesota nice, Wisconsin nice idea, and that's like basically like don't talk about politics, keep everything nice. And it's like we can be nice about it and just hush it over, and or we can like do something about this. We don't talk about race. We don't talk about class. We don't talk about the scary identity politics work. We are living in a society in which a lot of people believe that just mentioning race at all is, is racist and, and taboo and that we shouldn't do it. What made me so interested in the Race Class Narrative Project is really being able to acknowledge the differences um, between us and also be able to say that where there are differences, there are still similarities and we can still find solidarity across race and across class. Race Class Narrative is about understanding the power structure behind racism and classism without denying the existence of either. We are in a largely rural conservative place and it was really, really powerful for these county leaders who will be working in these rural conservative neighborhoods to see that like, actually talking about race, even with rural white voters, moves them. And talking about solidarity moves them. There were several times when it was tough to even finish because they were interrupting with, oh my gosh, I couldn't agree more, and we need to change what's going on in this country, and it was an incredible, visceral, positive response. Everyone's really, really excited to get out and try it, but also not just integrate it in like the kind of like professional organizing capacities, but like, you can, you can do this kind of race class narrative work at the dinner table. We're having honest and vulnerable and real conversations that actually get people to step outside their bubble. And this year, 2020, Michigan and a couple of other states in the Midwest will be under a really harsh microscope for the role that they'll play in the presidential contest. So race class narrative, I think, is a really serious intervention that can not only actually win power, but can also build the type of power necessary to really meaningfully improve people's lives. And as a battleground state, we're facing a very well-funded organizing machine. We're facing billions of dollars flooding the state. And the race class narrative is our shield to blunt that assault and ultimately use it to like push back. We could change Michigan if we are engaging people of color in a real way and caring about their issues. But guess what? It has to be meaningful. We can't pick people up and then put them down when we want to win an election. How do folks stay engaged and become like see themselves as a vital part of our democratic process once the election is over? People want to be heard. They want to know that you're looking out for them. And then in turn, you start looking out for each other. So I'm very hopeful that this can work on a really broad, scale. The whole thing is multiracial working class solidarity. The whole thing is building a network of care. We can't be afraid to love one another and really see ourselves in other people that we are told that we're not supposed to see ourselves in and say, well, I want for them what I would want for myself. When we do that, we don't just win this year, we don't just win in 2020. We set the groundwork for winning for all time.